everyone. Today we're going to talk about another type of plan view called a reflective ceiling plan. We often call this or refer to this as an RCP, reflective, reflected ceiling plan. Sorry. So RCP is um, another form of a plan view and it is looking up at the ceiling. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint and I will go in further detail. Um, let's switch there we go. Okay, so really quick, we are going to um, basically review a little bit about the multi-drawings. That's what we're talking about. This is the collective part of a uh, multi-drawing, multi-view drawing. And uh, we did talk a little bit about orthographic projection and basic architectural drawings, floor plans, sections, elevations, front and side sections. Um, also, their uh, reliable, sizable shapes and propor proportions are not visually um, correct, so we need to see all view sides. Um, also, we talked a little bit about line weights and the graphic representation um, and how the readability and so forth. So the line weights help emphasize some of these multi-view drawings. But today, we want to focus on a plan view drawing, but it's a plan view of the ceiling, reflected ceiling plan. And it's like the opposite of a floor plan. Instead of looking down, you are looking up. So some of the terms you'll hear is RCP, like I said, reflected ceiling plan. It's, it's uh, ceiling representation, line weight application. Uh, we talk about a little bit about ceiling slopes and curves and some line types. And also ceiling mounted textures and symbols. So um, what we want you to really understand is um, to, to be able to read the drawing and to be able to tell and uh, differentiate the elements on an RCP, um, we want you to be able to understand some of the symbols and how to draft one, because I will be doing a demo on the reflective ceiling plan. Um, last week we did the floor plan and this week we're going to do the ceiling. And you know, just different methods of achieving these outcomes are represented in our assignment. That's how you'll get to know how to draw and convey some of these elements. So let's get started. Um, interior multi-view drawings plans, RCP, reflected ceiling plan. So basically, you are using orthographic projection from the floor plan, and you are able, this is going to be a lot easier because you already have the floor plan, you're basically going to at least have the footprint or the outside of your reflective ceiling plan. So there won't be a lot of the scaling. You could just orthographically project it or outline it or copy it. And um, it reveals the shape and the characteristics. The scale reference is already there. So once we draw the floor plan, we're able to, um, to uh, ascertain the uh, ceiling plan. Reflective ceiling plan. So they are looking up at a ceiling at seven feet above finished floor. Now, the floor plan was like chopping horizontally the um, plane at four feet above finished floor. But a reflective ceiling plan, it chops it basically like chops off the roof at seven feet. So you have a couple of inches or a couple of feet there. So that's what the reflective ceiling plan. So you're seeing everything that's seven feet and up. Um, it shows the lighting, the sprinklers, uh, smoke detectors, or any other object that are located on the ceiling, such as the mechanical air diffusers or grills. Reflective ceiling plan, RCP, is named so because it is a mirror reflection or reflected view of a floor plan. So um, when you are seeing the ceiling, it's like it both, if, it, if you all just looked up, everything that's on your ceiling, I have a ceiling fan here, I have a sprinkler, um, I have an air vent, I would have to draft all of those components. It is just as important as the uh, bottom part of the, the different outlets and all the things that are on four feet below here. Seven feet up, everything gets drafted. So you are seeing um, both, you know, fixtures, um, what the venting, the air ducts that go in and out. We call it HVAC, which stands for um, heating, uh, ventilation, air conditioning, HVAC. So that's another term you'll learn. And um, we will definitely um, get to those terms shortly. So reflective ceiling plan is seven feet above finished floor. That's that AFF. You learn that on your abbreviations. 
and basically it's just a mere reflecting of the floor plan. So we want to um, take a look at what that looks like. So you basically take a horizontal cut and um, right there at the intermediate walls, high at seven feet. So the floor plan was over down here at four feet looking down. Here's seven feet and you're looking up, okay? So this shows the characteristics of the ceiling, um, ceiling heights, the slopes, the surfaces, all the elements that have to do with the ceiling are going to be represented on this plan. But basically you do see, a, you will see the walls of course, but certain things you may not see on, um, on the RCP because they are seven feet and up. Things such as possibly certain fixtures and stuff may not be on the reflective ceiling plan. We want to focus on the main things that um, that um, are on the ceiling, not things that are on the floor plan, like stairs and windows and that sort of stuff. So when you're looking at a reflective ceiling plan, you know, it basically it corresponds with what's going on below. So you are able to pull it up and now you're 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 mirroring. Here's a floor plan and here's what's going on in their ceiling plan. And so when you project it, see those lines projecting up? It's kind of, they're use orthographic projection to create some of the more structural elements and give you an idea of what's going on up here. So it's a very focused um, effort and you can edit it and really make sure that you are showing your features, but you want to make sure that you absolutely have a perfect floor plan that's perfect to scale because that's going to affect what's happening on your ceiling because your ceiling walls, um, the length and width have got to match the floor plan because they're all connected. And so um, we start to learn a little bit about that, but using orthographic projection to create that, um, that uh, situation. So basically it's a direct relationship between these walls, the roof and the structure. It kind of brings it all together. Um, a reflective ceiling plan, this is what um, you will see on a reflective ceiling plan in a residential space. You'll see all the lighting locations, all those down lights and so forth. Um, you will see drop, a drop um, ceiling and different ceiling heights. We call those soffits. So when you have a, an area in your ceiling that drops or pushes in, we, were, we show that in our RCPs and we indicate the height difference so that people know when they're looking at it, oh, there's a soffit that comes down there because now it is lowered another foot or this is at 12 feet above finished floor and this is at 11. There must be a soffit that comes down for one foot. So we communicate a lot of the interesting elements in the ceiling and one of them is the soffits and ceiling heights. And um, we also do all the different kinds of fixtures, sconces, uh, recessed lights, like ceiling fans. Um, sometimes we'll put switch locations and so when you put a switch location, we will put a little circuit dot, 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 a little dash line to show where, what light fixture goes on. And I will do that in the demo. Um, we put notes referring to the type of fixtures thing, things are. We call those call out notes. Um, it is a, if it's a ceiling fan, it might need a certain support. So we have to um, call certain notes out when there are elements on a ceiling that we're designing that may require extra strength. We put exhaust fans or exhaust hoods. You'll see air diffusers and vents. Like I said, that's called HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Then you'll see speakers from a stereo or other communication devices. We call that AV, audio visual. Um, you'll see smoke and fire, carbon monoxide, um, uh, fire protection, fire alarms or devices, sprinklers, um, any other decorative items uh, or structural like beams and that sort of stuff. And also you'll show, depending how high, the windows and the doors, but they're lighter and often you don't show the door swing. And so um, that is, uh, depends on the firm. Some show them, some don't. But if it's on our RCP, it is a continuous line. Sometimes they won't show a door swing. They'll just show a little line across it. So, but these are in uh, essence, most of the things you'll find in a reflective ceiling plan. Here's a, just a photo. So we look at this reflective ceiling plan. Here you see these drop down ceiling fans with lights. So if I were looking up there, I would show this material. It's a tin core, some decorative 
metal, um, different uh, metal panels. I would call that out. I would show these ceiling fans and how they're dropped a certain length. Um, we would probably even show the crown molding all the way around there. So anything decorative that's going on here would be seen on this reflected ceiling plant. Here we would show different ceiling heights. Do you see this is a round, we call that a soffit, and it is hanging on suspended um, wires. So this ceiling height up here is one height. This drop ceiling is another, and even down here, it's even a different ceiling height. So this would be a very interesting plan, reflective ceiling plan. And do you see how this circle soffit mimics the reception area below? It mimics it to create harmony. They would also show all these little down lights inside that and that large dome light would also be in um, the reflective ceiling plan there. Um, special fixtures are like ceiling fans. You would definitely be showing those and they have an extra symbol. They're templates that look like ceiling fans and we want to make sure we make special note of them um, because sometimes they require extra weight um, support. So you would have to put some bracing or extra um, uh, support into the ceiling so the span or chandelier will not fall down. So very heavy chandeliers uh, might need extra what we call bracing. Uh, we I do restaurants and um, large casinos. I mean, some of these chandeliers are thousands of pounds. So when we're specifying, we have to provide the mechanical engineer and um, all the different uh, structural engineer the weight of these items and make a note to provide the proper um, blocking so we can handle that. It might need extra reinforcements in the ceiling. It's a great liability if one of those came crashing down. And so we have to be very careful. Um, additionally, we would, um, you would see things like smoke detectors. They have their own little symbol so you can identify them. Some now um, have the carbon monoxide smoke detector combo in them, and those are often located on the ceiling throughout the space for coat. You would also put switch locations. And we'll show you what that looks like. The switch location is funny because you would think, why would you put switch locations if it's not on the ceiling? Well, we put the switch locations because we take the switch and we put a little curved dotted line, which we call a circuit line, and we attach it to the lighting fixture in the ceiling that it turns on. This shows the electrician, when he lays the lights on the ceiling, where is the electrical source coming from? As a designer, you will often be putting all kinds of lighting and you need to give the contractor a source to which to turn it on and off. So that's why we add switches. And I will show you how to do that in the demo on the RCP. Here's some examples just to show you a little bit about um, what they look like too. And let's get that open. So here's a reflective ceiling plan. And as you can see, these are little round can lights. These little circles represent that. These little dash lines are called a circuit line. And they all go to one little um, area here. And so they're kind of, they're running through and they're showing the switch. So that's a little switch, even though it's very small, it has an S there. When you flip that switch, it turns on this light and all the way through to this light. And it also, this second switch turns on that light. So it really shows you where they turn on the lights. Here is, um, you know, so each one, there's a little switch here and it shows that that one turns on that. There's a switch here and that turns on those lights. So we add switches little teeny S's with a look like a dollar sign. And then we put these little dotted circuit lines so that you understand that you would turn this light on here, but you have the option to turn it off here. That's called a two-way switch. We'll get into that in a bit. Here is a typical floor plan, and this is an office. And as you'll see, it's got all the furniture laid out in it. If you walk in this office, there's a reception area. We always like to design the ceiling according to the design of the floor plan. So you can't really do a full ceiling design until you have the floor plan completed. And in most cases, even the furniture layout. Think about your dining table. You would need to have a dining table in place to know exactly where to hang the chandelier. I mean, a lot of us have 
made the mistake of not hanging the pendant or chandelier right exactly over the dining table. And then we have to add a hook and a chain to modify it. That's why it's important to have like a floor plan such as this to lay out some of the key components so that you can put your lighting on it. Now pay special note to some of these architectural features in this floor plan, like this curved reception area. Try to design your lighting to complement the structure. So let's look at what the reflective ceiling plan looks like to this. As you can see, there is a dropped down soffit right over that reception area, giving it some character and design. The rest of the ceiling is very simple. These are two by four fluorescent lights. And then in between is just your regular ceiling grid that is often found in commercial spaces. These X's, they refer, refer to the air supply and then the diagonals are the air return. This is part of the HVA system, the air conditioning and the heating ventilation air conditioning system. For every, you have to have so many air supplies and so many air returns. So some suck up the air and others give the air. Here we have little exit signs. They kind of have an interesting little cross and they have two areas that are blacked out. And then here's emergency lighting. And you will see those in the correct sign. So wherever there's an exit, you'll see that there's an exit sign indicating how to get out. This is all part of life and safety codes that are required for commercial spaces. Even these lightings, they, they actually have two lights that show and point at the exit so people can easily get out to the exit. So this is what the ceiling plan looks like to this floor plan. Here we have another floor plan, more residential. We've got a little kitchen and a dining table, um, a little bedroom over here, um, a laundry room, a living room, and a kitchen. Here's a couple of different little uh, legends for the wall. Let's see what the reflective ceiling plan looks like in this. As you can see, they have strategically put a pendant right here, right over that dining table. If I toggle back to the dining room, you'll see the dining room is here and they put a pendant light over that dining room. Here you'll see in the kitchen, there's a light switch that turns on all three of these pendants. There's an additional light switch that happens to turn on some of the down lights throughout the space. Once again, an additional light fixture that turns on a light right over the sink. We all love to have lights over the sink for some um, nice task lighting. So you'll see this is a lot simpler. There's no grid lines um, you, because this isn't a T-bar system. This is all drywalled. Most residential ceilings just have pure drywall on them and are smooth. Here you'll see that this switch controls two of these lights and you turn it off. And so residential RCPs are quite more, are, are more simpler than that of uh, commercial spaces. To the left here, we have what's called a RCP legend or an electrical legend. We show some of the outlets and fixtures and some of the pendants and we name what they are. So when people see them on the plan, they're able to identify what kind of fixture that is. So these legends are really important. A lot of times we even give them what's called item numbers. So it might be L1 standing for light one, L2, and then when you go back to a specification page, you look that up and you find out what type of lighting it is, the manufacturer, and all of that. So each one of these symbols have a specific purpose. Some are more general for the electrician, but some are definitely for the designer because if they have to purchase any decorative elements, they need to know what they are and how to get them and their specifications. So as you see, uh, this um, ceiling plan is quite simple. Now this next one is a juice bar idea called Chris. And you'll see that there's two parts of this space. There's the front part with the reflective ceiling plan and back here's the kitchen. When you walk into the space, this, these were all beams and above it is very open. We had all that exposed ductwork. Over the counter was a hanging beam 
and back here was drywall that was smooth with little downlights throughout the space. But when you walked into the kitchen, it was your typical two by four ceiling grid with fluorescent lights. That's very um, typical for a kitchen. There's even elements over here that are hanging pendants that are right over an eating counter. So when I show you the floor plan, you'll see this is what we were looking at. There were exposed beams here, an eating counter here with pendant lights. Then we had a beam here and a drop soffit and then T-bar back through here. So as you see, that is the ceiling to that floor plan. Now these are restrooms. Restrooms also are showing some notes with various lighting fixtures and they were our, um, what we call hard lid. They're solid on the top. There's no ceiling grid. And this is the hallway. So it's really interesting to compare. So as you went to the hallway, the two restrooms, they were small. They had their own little pendant lights and decorative light fixtures over the sinks. And here we have the actual floor plan. And is, as you continue, here's another space. It's a lodge space. This is something more like a dorm room. And here shows your space. And when you look at the reflective ceiling plan, it goes into each individual room and it starts to, um, we start to look at some of the T-bar elements. That is a special detail for this area. And these little areas um, go over the um, reception. And here they add a T-bar to the section. So sometimes we'll take a reflective ceiling plan and we'll just do a detail of one area and place that detail to the right. Here's a little legend showing you what materials the rest of these ceilings are made out of. This is the electrical for that space. So as you can see, there are a lot of little lights with circuits throughout uh, going to different switches. So it can get quite complex. And here we have all of that, that legend, that electricals and symbol legend. And down here we have all the ceiling finishes. These are our legends. These legends help communicate what's going on there. Once again, this is an office building I did in um, a Cedar or a Walnut Creek. It's a medical facility. And you see there's a lot of separate little offices around here. And this is a huge, this is called the Volt. It has four foot concrete ceilings here, or walls for radiation. And people walk into the space and um, they're able to um, flow through the space. And it's, so here's the entry right here. And there's the waiting area, seats, and then here's the reception. So when you look at the reflective ceiling plan, when you walk in here, you see that the reception area has a drop soffit and it mimics what's going on below. Once again, very commercial, just two by two tealings, teal, uh, ceiling bar systems throughout, all throughout this with just dropped in two by two lights. So a typical T-bar system is either two by four or two by two, and you see it mainly in commercial and institutions here. But you can see some decorative elements here, some drop ceilings in the storage areas, and then the rest is all uh, two by two uh, ceiling um, tiles. Here's something that's a little more decorative. They're showing that they have, they've painted it and colored it. They've added track lighting here. Once again, you have a legend. And now, and they even did it in color. So this is a step soffit showing kind of a rainbow type of, of um, air element here. Possibly this mimics a stage. It makes sense since there's a series of stage lighting right here. And then you see different dropped um, areas of wood and it probably mimics some kind of architectural feature below. So as you can see, that kind of ends the reflective ceiling plan. And you'll see that there are so many different elements um, to a ceiling. Designing ceilings are so much fun, but you have to start with the floor plan and work your way up. So wait, uh, come and join me at the RCP demo and we will walk you through how to put together a reflective ceiling plan.